Hey folks, it's Dr. Pete Vitale here at the Cairo Dojo. I'm going to let you sit in on one of our Cairo Dojo mobility sessions. So saddle up, get yourself a mat. We'll be doing some standing first and then some mat exercises. And follow along. See if you get a little loose from it. I'm going to do it in segments. So you can do one segment and you do the whole, the, whole, the whole training, okay? So let's start with our heels together. Toes at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Squeezing the thighs together. Using our feet as talons to grip the floor. Being aware of our center, putting our hands on our center, an inch or two below the navel, an inch or two inside the body. As we squeeze the thighs together, we squeeze the glutes, we pull the navel in and up just a little bit, and then we elongate through the spine, pulling our chin backwards, straight back, and feeling the silken thread pulling our head towards the ceiling. So we got a good grip on the ground, but we're actually at our tallest height with the silken head going up towards the ceiling. Now I want you to just take your breath now and focus on that energy of oxygen, the chi, the energy going into your nose, down the central shoot of your body, and going to the center. And imagine that center as like a grapefruit or a cantaloupe in the, in, the, in the middle of your gut. And as you breathe in, it expands with energy and lights up. And then when you breathe out, it gets a little, it, it contracts a little. Then it gets a little bigger with the next breath. And feel that expansion of energy throughout the, your whole energy field that surrounds you. In through the nose, when you breathe out, you breathe out through your mouth, you breathe out the toxins, the gray air, the carbon dioxide, the, the, the gunk, let that out. And then from here, we open the legs a little bit and we start to spin from the center. It's the center that spins first. As it spins, you'll notice you'll squeeze one butt cheek and you'll go one way and then you'll squeeze the other butt cheek and you'll go the other way. Keep yourself where your navel is in and lifted just a little bit so you're long in the torso. You don't want your ribs coming down to your, to, to your pelvis. And also feel that silky thread pulling you up towards the ceiling. And this is called the Round the World. It's the first exercise associated, associated with Dao De Ching, the ancient Chinese text. And it's a universal movement of spinning, spinning your energy field. You know, think it's just not you in your body. It was a field around you, it can be measured scientifically. And you're spinning that energy field around you. Seems like I got a squeaky board here, so I'll move back. And then we go a little bit wider. We take the stance wider and start to think of a softball game. You know, you, you're warming up, getting ready to bat. So it's a little bit more athletic. And as we do it, we start to hit the sides. In the front, it's a department, tapping, open hand not a closed hand. It's almost like you want to trap the air in there a little bit. In the back, it's knuckles on the kidney. Knuckles on the kidney, soft knuckles. Tap potman in the front, lungs, lung and kidney meridian. So again, we're getting energy concentrated in our centers. So now when we do exercise, we can use it and move that energy around the body. That's what Tai Chi actually means. The work of Chi, the work of moving Chi around your body. Good. And then just like a fan, we turn it off and the fan blades just don't stop. They slow down like that. So let's continue to topotment, open hands to the top of the head, all around the head into the face. This is stimulating not only calming of the nerves and the muscles, but it's stimulating lymphatic flow, the flow of the, the organs of your immune system is your lymphatic system, and they're watery, there's water and fluids in there, a lot of waste products, so we're getting that uncongested, we're getting it to circulate. Then we go to the side of the neck, you know the glands when you have a sore throat on the side of your neck, and again, you can hear how it sounds. There's a little air in there with the cupped hand. You're not smacking it. Then we go down the arms. And 
And then we go right to the, to the little valley where our shoulder meets our chest. Very important lymph glands in there. Lymph ducts, I should say. Relieve the congestion, it drains. See, it's draining my head around. Then we do the King Kong, which is right where the collarbones meet the sternum, right underneath on the ribs. And you even give a little humming. That internal, that internal movement of the humming is, is a massage in itself. It's like an internal massage. And it's fun to do. And then we work down the chest a little bit. And then we call this one a jelly belly. Let your belly just relax and feel the water. It's like a water bag. The biggest lymph gland is right in the center of your belly. And if you do it right, you should feel the, the shock wave go right to the, almost to your spine. So keep that nice and loose. You get a little stance and just stay relaxed. And we do the inside of the inguinal area, which is inside of your hip pockets. Pretty much right on your hip pockets. A little bit in there. A lot of lymph glands there. And then we go down into the inner thighs. We go to booty and the outer thighs, hamstrings. We go behind the knees, very important energy point behind the knees. And then we do the calves and the shins. Good. Okay. Now we shake out our hands, our last of our warm up. And this is what we're doing. We're not trying to stretch and be tight, you know, and loosen tight. We're trying to be mobile, fluid. We're trying to be like nature, like a tree moves in the wind. Like a dog shakes themselves out when they get a, or a bear shakes themselves out. So think of that when we start shaking ourselves out. So get your claw feet into the ground and start to bounce at the knee. The knee is like a shock absorber. So think of a nice, easy little oscillation with a nice little easy bounce. And as you bounce, you imagine your center there's a can of jelly beans or coffee beans right on your belt buckle, and you're shaking up the, that can of coffee. And as you do that, you let the rest of the body go. You can also think of a silken thread kind of pulling you like a, you know, try to think of being like a, a, a loose marionette puppet. And this, this really relaxes the muscles and I call it like shaking a chicken off the bone. You want to feel them, your muscles almost coming off the bone. Like we have to use, make a, a boiled chicken and it's tender and just, it just comes right off the bone. Or ribs, uh, ribs right off the bone. So just shake it and just try to feel your muscles totally loose and relaxing. Good. Good. Okay, good. We're ready for our next exercise. Good. Okay, now we're gonna get into a little Tai Chi exercise. This is called spinal cord breathing. We're gonna really be mobilizing our spinal cord. So we're gonna take a breath in, expand the whole body, just feel large and charged, feel big, feel tall, like you're standing by the beach and the sun is coming up and the ocean is, is coming in and you feel that breeze on your skin. And then you're going to breathe out, and as you breathe out, you pull the navel in and up and form a standing fetal position, bending at the knees, squeezing everything in the front of your body, squeezing everything together, pulling the navel up and in, keep breathing out. You're forming a C. You're tucking the tail of the spine and you're tucking the chin. So it's full flexion of the spine. slowly come, tuck our tail under us. We come up one vertebrae at a time. And we go to our first position of extension, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the low back, but don't jam it. Stay tall and then go backwards. Don't be short and, and jam backwards. Be tall and jam backwards. Then we breathe out, into flexion. All the way out, try to get smaller. Try to get even smaller, bend the knees a little more. 
and then tuck the tail under. Breathe in, unfold. You can take a few breaths here, big deep breaths. Still pull the navel up and in. Clear, you should be draining. You should be sneezing. You should be passing gas. You're trying to get the body to cleanse itself. And this is what we're doing. And then shh, third rep. Shh. Make it smaller, make it tinier. Feel the stretch in the low back. Pull the navel up and in. And then slowly come out of it by putting the tail under first. One vertebrae at a time. And open it up. Fantastic. Good. Now continue to do it, but do it on your own. And now think of your piece of seaweed. And the tide goes out. And the tide comes in. So, and just at your own pace and make it fluid, make it graceful. And again, feel your center is doing the motion. Your center pulls back, you go forward. Center moves forward, you go back. And again. Good. Shake out your legs, shake out your arms just a little bit. Now we're going to go into the horse stance. The horse stance, we're going to take a wider stance. Our toes are pointing out a little bit. And when we go into the horse stance, we want the upper body to be perfectly straight, our chin tucked back. We can, as we go down, we can lift and raise our arms in unison, but the only thing that moves is the knees, and the knees go straight out to the sides. They stay over the, in alignment with the toes. You don't want your knees in, you don't want your knees too far out. You want them straight over the toes. Now, my knee's a little sore today, so I'm only gonna go down as far as I feel comfortable. You'll see as the knee loosens up from this exercise, you'll see I'll be able to go down further. I'm trying to have the hands so that you're sitting back a little bit. So try to force your tail underneath you so your chest is open. We always want to be open through the collarbones. Remember I said that before. Just keep the collar, your shoulders wide, not just pulled back. And then the arms are like we're just hugging a small tree. And from that position down there to get used to it, we're going to move. And we're going to move any which way you want to move. You can imagine your martial arts person doing your katas, your movements. You can pretend you're in a vat of honey or in water and you're pushing the water, the honey around. You could step, take a little step a little bit, move the feet around just a little bit. And again, you're keeping that upper body for now. We're keeping the upper body up. And this is called the dancing horse and the great thing about this is you're feeling your own inner intelligence your own inner energy your own inner gyroscope should be moving you from when you come from your center the movement becomes natural there is no correct technique other than staying in the correct position but then once you have the correct technique then you can improvise and make movements in the way the human body moves in arcing in circles And slowly stand up out of it and give your legs a little rest because I bet they're a little burning right now and that's the thing you can do this easy if you have bad knees or you have an injury this is Tai Chi this is Qi Kung animals don't go with a yoga mat to their class they know how to stretch naturally you know how to stretch naturally as well so try to get in touch with, especially when you're in touch with your center try to get in touch with that inner gyroscope, the inner intelligent, that inner intelligent gyroscope, okay? Okay, let's go for set number two now. This one we're gonna do a little different. So let's get into the standard position. Get your feet set if you wanna go a little wider on the second set. Make sure the upper body's straight, long in the collarbones. 
And as we bend the legs, we bring the arms to hug the tree. Now already I can get down a little bit lower, the knee is loosening up, which is nice. Get a little bit more strain. We're making sure to tuck our tail underneath us, pull the upper body, pull the spine back just a little bit more, sit back into it, good. And you don't have to be in an extension backwards like this. You just want to be straight and let the, the hips and the knees take the brunt of it. Now we're going to move, and now we're going to pretend we're in a giant bubble. So we have to wipe in and touch the, all the inside of the bubble. So you get a little bit of a rest when you have to straighten your legs to do the top of the bubble. Do behind you. Make sure you get down to the lower part of the bubble. Any which way you want it to go. Concentrating now on my knees. I'm getting that rotation of the knee. I'm gripping the floor with my foot so I have a good grounding, so the knee has good support as it moves. Getting some mobilization of the ankles. The ankles are moving. And then we slowly come out of it. And just give ourselves a shake out. Give yourself a shake out. Most of these exercises will do two or three sets. So we're gonna do another, we move into something else. I call this one the fielder's exercise. And it's exactly like you would do as if you were playing softball on a sunny July 4th day. You're gonna get into a fielder's position. So here the toes are gonna to be pointing a little bit straighter. They're still pointed out a little bit. And notice how my back is flat. A fielder does not look at the ball like this. Lift your upper body up and get contraction through the low back muscles. So you're flat from your tailbone to your head. Straight line. Of course, you're looking a little forward. And I like to have the hands with the, uh, with the, with the, the thumbs on the inside and the elbows not out to the side, but back at about, you're thinking four o'clock, I'm sorry, four o'clock and eight o'clock or, or five o'clock and seven o'clock. So they're pointing back a little bit, but they're not, they're not pulled all the way back. You want to, but you want to get a little contraction of your shoulder blades squeezing together. And where you want to feel this is in your lower back and in between your shoulder blades, where your shoulder blades attach to your lower back. Go a little bit lower, bending the knees, but the back stays flat, good. Make sure your toes are pointing just a little bit out. You don't want them too far out. You want them relatively forward because that's the way that a fielder would be on more forward on their, their toes. Pushing off the ball of their foot. Good. And then we're gonna push through the floor. Yeah, I feel some burn in the thighs just from holding that position. Shaking out. Don't let your upper body rest so much. On your, your hands are on your knees, but you're really pulling your upper body backwards, so there's not a lot of pressure with your hands on your knees. Shake it out a little bit. Now this next one is a lot of, uh, if any of you are, uh, know Dr., and my good friend Dr. Eric Goodman in Foundation Training, this is a little riff on what he does. I uh, just wanted to give him a shout out and thank him for that. So here we go back into that fielder's exercise. And we got ourselves set up nice. We're trying to keep the ribs away from the pelvis. That's what's giving us the extension of the back. As soon as your ribs come down like this, you, you're, you're not getting the exercise and you're putting pressure on your discs. We want to make sure that the back is flat, the ribs are away from the pelvis, and we're in that good fielder's position. Once we maintain it, we got a good bend of the knees. Then we're gonna slowly sit back on our heels to the point where we almost feel like we're gonna fall backwards, but we use the hands to counterbalance. And as we push the butt back, we lift the upper body. And we feel that in between our shoulder blades. We feel the low back muscles. You're supposed to feel some burning in the low back. We're making it stronger. Just because you have back pain doesn't mean that it's something bad. Just like when you do biceps, you feel pain in the biceps when you're doing it. So you're gonna feel some pain in the low back when you do this, but it's a good pain. It's the lactic acid building up. Try to push the hips back a little bit more, reach a little more forward, and I like an underhand reach. 
and then the hands come back in, and then we push through the floor. Good, and give yourself a chance to shake out your legs. Good. Okay, last set, best set, like my friend Lee Haney always says, the champ. Hope he's watching it, Lee, I hope you're watching this one today. All right, here we go. Back into that fielder's position. Try to challenge yourself and get the knees a little bit lower. I feel, I wish I could get a little lower, but again, like I said, I got a little knee pain today, so that's how you modify. You'd be smart about it. And if you have to modify a little bit, you modify a little bit. Then from here, we sit back on our heels. And now we raise just one hand forward and lift. Get a little cross activation of the low back muscles. You can even reach across a little to the side. You could even sway a little bit, not too much here, just a little bit. The joints don't have a lot of movement. So you just want to sway just enough that you feel that little bit of swiveling, but don't jam. And now let's do the other arm. Your brain likes it when it feels safe. You only can stretch as far as your brain feels safe, otherwise your brain will stop you, you'll get tight because your brain thinks you're gonna rip something. Good, back to the center. And then we push through our legs again and shake those babies out, good. Okay, we're gonna start on our hands and knees. And we call this, everybody knows the cat stretch, but we call this the dynamic cat stretch. So what we're gonna do is pull the navel up and in, let the head drop, let the tail go under. That's flexion. That's flexing the spine, bringing the ribs towards the pelvis as hard as you can. Then we do the opposite. We open the ribs and the pelvis like an accordion. We stick our tail up. We lift our head up. That's extension. So we oscillate between flexion and extension. Instead of stretching, think of oscillation that you want to move in the range. And as you move, that's what gives you mobility. That's what loosens you up. And then we have side to side. The knees come together. Not only are we stretching the spine from side to side, but if the knees are together, you should feel a good stretching in the glute muscle right to the side. Oh, so nice. Notice I'm also flexing my head from side to side. And then finally with the legs open, we take the hand, we thread the needle, putting it through our arm and leg, bringing our head and shoulder down. And then we rotate and lift up to the ceiling. And again, only go as far as you feel comfortable. You don't have to force yourself to the end. That's the wrong way to stretch. You want to create an oscillation, a vibration, a wave. Think of when you are doing mobility and stretching work that you're oscillating, you're creating a wave. And then do the other arm, of course. And this is rotation of the thoracic spine, right? Between your shoulder blades. And then a real dynamic cat is you combine all of them. Go in any which way you want. Change your position. Change your stagger of your knees and your hands. Get some rotation in different positions. You want to try to feel like there's a spotlight going up and down your spine and you're feeling different air, like right there. If I go just like this, I hit just that right perfect spot. Oh, that feels so good. I bet you I feel the same thing going this way. Good. Good. And then we sit back into the prayer position. Now, I can't go all the way down and have my hips touch my, my, my calves, but if you can do that, most definitely do that. Push with your hands, push so that you're pushing your tailbone backwards. 
You could also try this with a wider stance of your knees. You could try it with the knees in and try it with the knees out. And again, we're oscillating. And then we're going to oscillate down. So we bring our pelvis down to the ground. Go on our elbows. This is called the Sphinx stretch. Elbows dig in and we pull our upper body away from our lower body. So imagine your lower body almost like a sack of potatoes. It has no weight, no activity. We're pulling up, forward, and then up. And that's how you stretch the low back. You don't just come straight up, you can jam it. You make it long, then you come up. And again, you can oscillate a little bit here. We can bend the knees. I love this one, rotating from side to side. Really loosens up the hips. And then we bring our elbows underneath us. You want to have claw hands, clawing the ground. Your elbows are about the level of your chin. You're, you're digging your big toe, I call it the, the, the big toe claw hook. You're clawing your big toe and your toes into the mat. You're going to take a deep breath in, open your shoulder blades up. And as you let it out, you come up on your knees. And you want your back to be flat. This is called the 12 point plank. You want to pull just a little bit. I'm going to exaggerate it. If you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'm pulling my navel in and up. My back is totally flat. At least I think it is. Sometimes you don't have the awareness of it if it's flat. That's why if you look in a mirror, make sure that it's flat. And here we're going to undulate a little bit. We're going to let our hips drop a little bit, lift our head. And then we're going to lift our hips up and drop our forehead to the mat. So a little bit of undulation back and forth. This looks easy, but it is not. We're taking the legs out of the plank by doing this. And then we relax down, we put our arms to our side, palms are up, and again, they're going from like five and seven o'clock, maybe four and eight o'clock on a dial, and not straight behind you, out to the side a little bit. We're nice and long, make your body nice and long, and then we lift all five points, the arms, the legs, and the head into the bow. And again, we can do some oscillation here, one of the principles of Cairo Dojo is that we're always using something. We're always moving a little bit. This is why it's how you activate much more muscle fibers and get a good workout. Good. Hands underneath us, one more set. Dynamic cat stretch. Again, any way you wanna go. Again, try to get that inner navigator, that inner gyroscope, your innate intelligence to do it for you. Don't think it, just do it. Just like an animal will stretch out. They don't think about it. They just do it because it feels good. Then we go into the prayer position again. Again, you could alternate where your knees are. Feel a stretch on the front of the calves, uh, front of the ankles as well. And then we oscillate into face down, getting the elbows underneath us, doing a sphinx stretch. Again, pull with the elbows, lift, and make it a comfortable lift. Don't jam, and then move. Try one leg at a time. Experiment, I want you to be inside yourselves and feel what's happening rather than doing something you expect, you're expected to do. Don't expect anything, just feel it. We get the claw hands, we dig in the big claw toe, our elbows about the level of our chin, breath in, 
open the shoulder blades. And as you breathe out, the navel comes up and in, and then the hips raise into a straight line position. This set will go side to side. So just undulate side to side. It's almost like he's trying to stick your ribs out to the side. And then we do a little flexion and extension movement. And boy, am I starting to feel this. Sometimes subtle is better. And then on the last repetition, we come down and we go right into a length, putting our hands to our sides, palms up, four, four o'clock and seven o'clock, and nice and long and raise all points. And give that some movement too. Finish off with a quick dynamic cat, and then we go on to our backs. So we roll on to the back. Now, very important when we bring the knees to the chest, we don't bring them into the chest because they only go so far. We bring them out a little bit, we get better range of motion. You could grab behind the knees, you could grab in front of the knees. The head should be relaxed, and we call this the sacral massage, or the sacral wobble. You should feel this right on your tailbone, right at the top between your two gluteus maximus cheek muscles. And you're giving yourself a little massage. You should even feel the small of your back. Also feel the rotation in the hip joints itself. So you can see how much rotation I have in my hip joint here. I think you can, right? I'm still on camera. Still framed, right? Feels so nice. And our legs go onto the ground. We take our arms, palms up. Elbows and shoulder blades pull in and push into the mat. Our low back flattens on the mat. Our heels dig into the mat and our toes raise to form a pelvic bridge. Now look down at your, your knees. You don't want your knees too far in. I want them a little bit out for this one. And as I push my heels into the ground, I lift the sacrum and then the lower muscles, or the lower vertebrae, almost one at a time and lift up into a pelvic tilt lift, squeezing my shoulder blades together. I'll even walk my knee, my feet in just a little bit to get more height. And I'm gonna bring my hips as high as I can. And I'll, you'll actually feel a little bit of strain on the front of your hips where your front hip pockets are. Keep pressing, keep trying. Don't just get to a pot, spot and hold it there. Keep trying to press up, feel the glute cheeks squeezing together. This is what we're trying to target. The toes are up because it targets, and the heels are dug in because that activates and targets the glute muscles. Hold it, go a little higher. Now here's the most important part of this exercise. We go down slow, one vertebrae at a time. If you're wobbly, that's showing the weakness of your core. You should be able to do this smoothly, slowly. I'm wobbling a tiny bit. But one of the good things about this, each repetition you'll get better. Good. When you finally, the tailbone hits the ground, straighten your legs, arms overhead, and just make yourself long. Make yourself as long as you can make yourself. And as you're doing this, pull the navel in and up so you feel the abdominals cinch in around your waist. Let's do another repetition. The arms don't come down to the side. We squeeze the shoulder blades together, bend the knees, flatten the low back, lift the toes, make sure our knees are wide enough. We push through the heels, 
At first, we don't even come up yet. We're just pushing through the heels. Then the tailbone, the sacrum comes up. Then you feel each individual vertebrae coming up one at a time, slowly, in control. When you start to get high, you can bring your feet in a little more. Try to get more height. You want to keep pushing. You should feel a strain on the front of your hips. You should feel no jamming in the low back, you, but you should really feel the glute muscles squeezing together as if the, 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 the things you sit on every day in your chairs, they're squeezing in. Keep trying, keep pushing up, and then we come down slowly, one vertebrae at a time. We bring our knees to our chest, and we sink a wobble. Okay, I'm gonna turn around for the abdominals. And what we're gonna do is from that down position, we're going to roll up. We're gonna keep our heels on the mat for now. Your hands are just having to put somewhere, just putting them to the side of your knees. And what we're gonna do is look at our navel, Pull the navel in and up, and then raise our legs off the ground. We're balancing on the glute muscles. We're looking at our navel because we want to be activating the abdominals. We take our hands out to the sides. And then we go down very slow. Just trying to maintain balance. You may have to move your legs a little bit. But there will be a point, and try to resist that point, but there will be a point you go down, but don't give up. When, once you do go down, now your back is flat and you're pushing your low back into the mat. You're lifting the legs a little bit, lifting the hands a little bit, still looking at your navel. And then you slowly release, but that back has to stay on the ground. If you feel it starting to come up, then just let it go. We do not want the spine arching as we come down. Get nice and long. If you have a piece of furniture, I don't know if you can see it on here, I could grab the Pilates poles and I could stretch myself, make myself nice and long. If you want to grab the, 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 the couch or the table and keep making yourself long. Walk yourself down so you're nice and long. Then from here, we bring the knees towards the chest and we pop up again. That's rolling like a ball. That's what we're going to finish with. So we get back into our initial position, heels down, light touch, look at the navel, pull everything in, make your waist look nice and small here, and then lift and balance, hands out to the side. And again, just like all our other exercises, you could undulate, move a little bit, see what, challenge yourself, try to get off balance a little bit. And then come to center and the reverse setup. Make sure you really look hard at your navel. As you come down, try to resist that point. Oh, I didn't do too good, but I'm lifting my legs up. I'm still looking at my navel. I'm lifting my arms up. And now I release slowly. Oh, that feels so nice. And we grab the poles. And a few breaths in. Again, even here, pull the navel up and in as you breathe out. So you become long in the torso. Imagine your hips moving away from your ribs. And then we bring the knees to the chest and give another pop up. And that's rolling like a ball. Now rolling like a ball is an official uh, exercise in Pilates. But I like to do it nice and loose. You're going to keep your chin tucked the whole time because you don't want to hit your head. And just think of yourself as like a, a rocker, you know, like a, uh, a rocking chair. Try to have your spine in that type of position. And I like to do it nice and loose. And I use my hands as well. And just, and you could come up and touch if you're at home. You may want to get some couch pillows under you so you don't hurt your spine because this will hurt on a, on a hard floor. And you could also come up and try to balance. This makes it a little bit tougher, and this is, makes it more of a, a strengthening exercise and a, 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 a conditioning exercise. I like to do this just to get loose, ah, just to feel 
free and easy. You know, one of the things that other chiropractors will vouch for me is it comes a time where patients can't sit up off the table. And that could be uh, even a young person, that they don't have the strength to sit up. And then I have some 90 year olds that can pop right up. So a lot of that has to do with the ability to be loose and allow your spine to dynamically go into that position. All right, so I'm gonna finish my rolling like a ball. And I hope you enjoyed this workout. I know I did. If you have any questions, you know where to contact me. Stay safe and God bless. Hey folks, Dr. Pete Gratali down here at the Cairo Dojo. And I wanted to give you folks a little bit of a gift today. A gift of a gift of strength, a gift of hope, a gift of love, a gift of energy, vibration, frequency, good vibrations for you. I'll try my best. So lay down, get in your recliners, stand up if you want, put your earbuds in and have soft eyes and get into your inner body, your inner self, by feeling these vibrations, hopefully that transmit over to you through your phone or your computer. And let them open up and let them go through you. Because every by the end when we're done today, every cell in your body is gonna be vibrating at a good level, a peaceful level, a, a serene level, an empowered and strengthened level. So enjoy. Let me put my wizard's hat on. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out.
deep breath in. Feel the breath going all the way down to your center, in through the nose, out the mouth. Feel your power now. Feel the energy going through you. I love you. I wish I could hug you, but this is the best that we can do right now. So stay safe, stay hopeful, and I'll see you tomorrow.